Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. On the last video we added the background to our menu. Today we are going to start to add UI components to it. We will create a simple menu with a button to start the game, an option to select the game difficulty and a sound volume controller. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. So let's start by adding our start game button. So on the hierarchy, over the canvas, I right click with my mouse button, and now I go to UI and I select button. This will add the button, as you guys can actually see. So let's start by uh, changing the name of our button so this will be the start game button all right next let's make sure the button is where we want it so the button should go right to the side of this to the right side of the screen so let's change the anchor of the button to right and top okay so right and top here we have it. Okay, so right now the button is quite small, so let's change the width to 400. Let's select the button here first. Alright, so let's change the width to 400. Where we have it, here it is. And let's change the height to 120. Okay, this looks good. So next, let's place the button at minus 300 on X and minus 300 as well on Y. Okay, so the button is right where we want it, but as you guys can see, the text of the button is quite small, so let's change that. So let's select the text from the button and Let's clear the text that says button and let's text here uh, start game. Right? Okay. So we don't want to use the default font for our button. As you guys can see here from from my, my project view, I have a font here called high def. Uh, I will leave it on the description below so you guys can download it. And we actually want to use this font right so after info after importing the font to your project drag it over the font field here on the text component and this will apply the font to your text as you guys can see so we have the right font but the text is still too small we have two ways of solving this you can increase the font size here for example, right now the value is 14. Um, however, we will do it by enabling the option called best fit. What this does is that makes Unity set the default size for the, the best size for the text so it will fill the button. Okay? So we also want text to be aligned with the button, so max, let's make sure that we have. Um, Align by geometry enable as well, right? Okay. So if we actually press play, <coughs> if we actually press play and we click on the button, we'll see that the button, when you click on it, changes color slightly. Um, this is not a bad button and it gives a uh, good feedback, but we want to have a, a cooler looking button. So let's change some more properties on it, okay? So let's turn the play off. So on the button component, here we set right here. Let's set the normal color to white, which I believe it already is, yes. Let's change the highlight color to a clear blue. For example, something like this. And let's change also the preset color, but to a more darker blue. So, 
somewhere around here yes this should be fine all right so we have our button right here um, let's just press play and as you guys can see the button is white once you put the mouse over it it gets uh, this bluish color and once you press it it gets darker all right so one thing you only get um, this color because it's activated and does nothing all right so you guys don't have to worry about it um, <coughs> so right uh, right now is kind of it does not look very good right so let's change some some things as well for example here on normal color we can actually get some transparency on it here on the alpha channel you can change it to 20 for example this will get some transparency on the button and let's do the same to the remaining colors okay so as you guys can see now we have some transparency on it so right now it's kind of hard to read the text because of the transparency right so let's change that also let's change the color to white and press play to see how this looks and it looks much much better as you guys can see okay so we can keep the shape of the button but we can also change it to do that I'm going to drag this image button for my project view here uh, that you guys can find in the description below so you guys can download it as well and I'm going to place it select the button I'm going to place it here on source image on the image component of my button so I'm going to drag it and place it over here right so ah, before any, anything else remember that the, once you import the button you must set it, it sh when you import it it should be texture you must set it to sprite to the end UI otherwise you won't be able to use it on the UI system all right so right now we have a small problem with the text as you guys can see it's leaving the It's it's leaving the the area of the button, but we can actually solve that by inserting a paragraph here on the text, and we have start again now working perfectly, as you guys can actually see here on the on on the screen. So now that we have a nice looking button, it's time to give it some functionality to it. So we want the button to load another scene once you click on it. In this case would be the game scene. Right? So let's start by creating a new C sharp script called UI Manager. So create C sharp script and I'm going to call it UI Manager. Now double click on it. So we open it on Visual Studio. All right, it's opening. Let's wait a few seconds. Now, one thing that we are going to do, actually the first thing that we are actually going to do is to delete the, the start and the update functions because we will not need them this class will only work as a place to hold all the functions we want to use in our UI system so we won't need the start and update 
So this also is taking a little bit long to start, don't know why. Oh, okay, here it is. So let's delete these two. We are not going to need them. Next, since we are actually going to work with scenes and make some changes between scenes, before you actually use the application load level, but since the new Unity version came out, we actually use another function called the scene manager, right? So in order to use it, we actually need to import a new library, in this case Unity using a Unity engine dot scene management, right? So we do this import and now <coughs> we actually want to create a new function so let's call it public void let's call it button start game and this will be where we are going to set the behavior for our button so right now I'm going to call let's comment this so this is the Button function, the start button function, and what you actually want to do once we click on the button is to load another scene. So we actually want to change scene. When click it, right? So in order to do that, we actually go and type scene manager here it is dot load scene and now we set the name of the scene we actually want to use as a level so I don't have a level already because this is just a small example so I'm actually going to call the mechanism scene that we used on previous tutorials so we actually set the name of the scene in this case mechanism alright so let's save the script we can now close Visual Studio and now I'm going to select the canvas and I'm going to drag the UI manager script to it as you guys can see here now going back to the button on the button you can actually find here on the button component an empty list on the end this is what will have the, the behaviors for the click on the button so I'm going to click as you guys can see it says the list is empty so I actually want to add a new function to it so I'm going to click on the plus sign right next we are need to we need to search the game object where the the code for the button is so I'm going to click here on none, where it says none object and this will open a list with all the game objects we have on the scene so our script is on canvas so I'm going to select the canvas object right so here now where it says no function I'm going to click it and we'll have several options here we have our script UI manager so I'm going to select this and I'm going to search for our method and here it is button start game I'm going to click on it and now when the button is clicked it will call this method and will change scenes right so if we actually press play now and if we click on the button it will change scene right so if you now keep in mind something and this is very important this is working just fine because on the build settings I already have my scenes so I'm actually going to delete those to show you guys what I'm talking about if you guys don't have scenes on the build especially the scene you want to to go for if you press play and you click on start game you'll get this error right this happens because you don't have the mechanism scene on the on the builder 
so in order to solve this and make all these transitions between scenes work fine you need to make sure we have all the scenes we want in the scenes in build so I'm going to here and I'm going we want the UI scene right so this will be our first scene when the game starts so it's on top with zero next we also want to use the mechanism scene right so once we do this and now if we press play we go to the button we press the button and now it changes scene as it should so <clears throat> Ok guys, this is how you actually create a simple button using UI and how you can give it functionality to it. On our next lesson, we will continue working with our menu and we'll add some more UI components to it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson, until the next video, have a nice day!